What's up guys, Silver here with another Spartan Assault Achievement Guide. This time we're doing Evacuated, which is Complete Operation D. Some general tips if you're having trouble with any of the missions throughout the game is to put on some boosters or get better weapons to start the mission. And to do that, you want to select the mission you want to do, and then you'll come to this screen, the Armory. And as you can see, it shows your loadout, where you're going to start the mission with. So you have your primary weapon, secondary weapon, armor ability, and booster. So you can see I clicked on my primary weapon, which was an assault rifle, but we could upgrade it to a sniper, a Spartan laser, or a rocket launcher. And the way you could do that is by using... XP that you've gathered by playing the game just naturally over time, and you could uh, select better weapons and boosters and everything uh, before you start a mission if you're having trouble with a particular mission. So same thing with the secondary weapon, we could upgrade that to any of those weapons as well. And then you have your armor ability, which you could change. In the video here, it's showing regen field as the default armor ability, but that will change based on whatever mission you're playing. But we could actually change it to an auto sentry, overshield, or seeker drone. And then also the booster we could change to a shield booster, damage booster, or score booster. I would recommend a damage booster if you're having trouble. Um, it makes your weapons more powerful, no matter what they are. So it's easier to just tear through the enemies, and that obviously makes it way less likely that they'll be able to kill you. And you can also see that my profile allows for one free use of some of these items because of the fact that I got certain achievements in Halo 4. But for someone that has never played Halo 4, that will not be available, unfortunately. So now that that's out of the way, a general tip for shooting is to just simply use both joysticks. One controls where you're moving, and you can still shoot with just that one joystick, but it is way less accurate than if you use both joysticks. The only downside is you actually move slower if you're using both joysticks, so just throwing that out there. I know some people have trouble with this game, but it's much easier if you're aware of that. So with that in mind, let's get into it. Starting off with D1 here, we're going to kill these three grunts right off the bat. We're just going to melee them to death. No need to waste any ammo. And then we are going to go up to the top, and we're going to grab some grenades out of this crate here. Uh, there is a gate that is blocking our progress to get to the rest of the mission. We're kind of stuck in here to start, but we're going to melee these brutes as they come up. There's an infinite supply of jetpack brutes that land, and we're going to grab their brute shot. We're going to use the brute shot to bust through this gate. So we're just going to collect a bunch of ammo as they keep landing. We'll keep meleeing them to death, keep grabbing their brute shot ammo, and uh, laying into this gate with it. So more brutes, more melees, more brute shot ammo. And the most you could carry is nine shots in your brute shot. So we want to bust through the gate and make sure that we have a full brute shot once we're through the gate. So that's what we're going to do here. The jetpack brutes actually stop spawning and coming at you once you bust through the gate. So you want to make sure you have enough ammo lying on the ground before you bust through the gate so you could fill it back up. And we're going to kill this one last brute. Shoot one last shot at that gate to bust it open. It had one sliver of health left. And we made sure that we had a brute shot lying on the ground so we could go uh, make sure we have full brute shot ammo once we move over to this gate. Uh, because this gate takes three grenades and nine brute shots to totally be destroyed. So uh, we could run over here and immediately just lay into this gate with all that ammo and uh, we'll be totally done with the mission. And you can just walk in there. But if you miss a shot or a grenade or something, there are grenades in that crate that I just went to and up here as well. And also you could just start shooting it with your magnum or whatever other gun you have uh, with you as well. Smaller guns like that aren't as effective, but you could still bust through the gate with it. But a very quick and easy mission. But at the end here, we jetpack away heroically as a bunch of debris falls on the map we were just on. Mission accomplished. And then we're going to move on to the second mission in this operation. To start, we're going to use the brute shot and grenades to take out all of these elites and jackals. So it's a one-hit kill with this brute shot. And also the grenades are one-hit kills as well. So we're just going to use that to go to the third uh, section. We're not going to do the first or second group of marines. We're going to go to the third group of marines first. Exchange your hard light shield for the stun blast armor ability. And then we're going to move up. Keep taking out the jackals and elites as you come upon them with either a grenade or the brute shot. Uh, we don't have to shoot a brute shot over there, but I did. Uh, we're going to have to take them out eventually anyway over there. Uh, and then we're going to move up here. And there's actually a couple ghosts and we're going to hijack one of them. Uh, they're actually parked, so I guess we're not hijacking them. We're just stealing them. Grand Theft Ghost. But we're going to move up here. Try not to kill the elites or jackals with a grenade or the brute shot if they're close to the ghost. Because obviously you don't want to damage them at all. You want to make sure that they're in pristine condition for when you hop in. But again, we're just using grenades and brute shots to kill these people. And if there are enemies too close to the ghost, I just run up to them and use the stun blast to stun them. And then I just beat them to death. But once you clear out this section of enemies, you want to blow up the fusion cores as well. So they don't blow up when you're right next to them later on. But then we're going to go to this nav point, which is by the third group of marines. Remember, we skipped the first and second one. And we just go back to the shield door immediately, and there's a bunch of enemies that spawn in. And we could splatter them immediately upon them spawning. You want to back up once the ghost starts spawning in, though. Because A, you can't splatter the ghost. And B, it actually blows up your ghost if it spawns in right on top of you. And you will fail the mission and have to start over. But just back up and take out that ghost with your guns. And then we're going to go over here and help these marines out. There's a couple jetpack brutes in the area. And also there's a bunch of elites and jackals. 
So we're going to go over here, and we're just going to use our gun at this point. We want to stay far away from these guys so we don't really take any damage. Uh, I forgot that Jackal was there, and he got too close to me, and he stuck me. You can see I have a pretty unhealthy ghost at this point. But we're going to just lay into these guys from far away so we don't have to deal with them close up later. And also you want to be aware of the shade turret that's just around the corner up top here. He could dish out a lot of damage to your ghost, so you want to kind of shoot him from an angle that he can't shoot you back. So that's what we're going to do here. We're just going to take him out while he can't shoot us. But now that we've helped out this third group of Marines, we're going to go back and help the first and second group of Marines. Don't worry, they don't die or anything if you ignore them for a long time. The encounter itself doesn't really start until you get there, so they won't die while you're over here dilly-dallying with the third group. But you can see we exchanged our weak ghost for a healthy ghost. And we're going to go down and start helping out the second group of Marines. You want to move up to the nav point to kind of start the interaction with all these guys. But you don't want to uh, really get too close to the brutes because they can throw grenades pretty uh, effectively. And they also have a brute shot, so that's not good. So keep your distance, shoot them from afar. And you can see that when I did move up to that nav point, there were actually some enemies that spawned in behind me. There were like four jackals and an elite, so be aware of that. Uh, once you move up to the nav point, just uh, move backwards. So you can quickly take those guys out with your gun or by splattering them. And you can ensure that you're not surrounded. But you want to watch out for those brute trip mines. You can see that one was on the ground waiting for me there and I took a lot of damage from it. So be on the lookout for those. And here we're just taking out the explosive barrels before we move past them so they don't blow up when we're next to them. And we're going to move up to this first group of marines that we skipped in the beginning of the mission and help these guys out. There's some jackals, there's some elites, and there's a brute jetpack guy you can see coming up from the cliff now. And he is going to uh, throw some grenades at us, or he's going to try. Whether by brute shot or trip mine, he's got a lot of explosive toys. But we're going to back up because we don't want to have to deal with that up close. And we just take him out from afar. We have our infinite uh, ammo and our ghost, and it goes all the way across the map. So no need to get too close. And now all we need to do is go to the final nav point, which is past the area where we uh, helped those marines out to begin with. Uh, the third group of marines that were kind of the first for us. But just keep moving in this direction. There's some marines waiting for us. And you can see the nav point there at the bottom of the ramp up to the elephant, which is open for us. Ready for us to hop in and go to the next mission. And we're moving on to the next mission, C3, which is going to start off with us in a grizzly tank, which is pretty sweet. A double barrel tank. Uh, every time you fire, it actually shoots two shells. So you can really easily take out all these wraiths. There's like five wraiths we need to take out in the beginning of this mission, and we also have a small convoy of scorpions helping us out as well. Uh, I don't really think we need their help because we got this grizzly, but, you know, we'll take it. And on top of all these active wraiths, there's actually a bunch of wraith wreckage and scorpion wreckage lying around the map as well, so we could drive through that, have fun with it, lots of explosions. And uh, there's some shade turrets that we're going to have to take out. You can see one up here, and there's going to be some ghosts. There's going to be some infantry as well, uh, but this part should be pretty easy. Uh, here's a bunch of the wreckage I was talking about, just lying around the map, a bunch of dead vehicles. So there's a ghost up here, which is not occupied, but there is a uh, an elite right there who would have no uh, hesitation to actually hop into that ghost. So take him out. We're going to move up here, and there's going to be a shade turret, a ghost, and uh, we're just going to make short work of him with the, uh, with the old scorpion, not scorpion, with the old grizzly tank. So more guys up here. There's actually barricades up here, so we can't take the grizzly any further, unfortunately. But we're going to clear out all these guys that we could reach with it before getting out. So now we're going to hop out, and we're going to take out this fuel rod turret. You could do it on foot, or there's actually a ghost that we could go get. Uh, if you do it on foot, you want to throw grenades at it. That's the most effective way to do it. So you can see that's what I'm doing here, kind of hiding behind the barricade for cover, and also throwing grenades right over it to destroy that turret. Uh, but the ghost is over here, and it's not manned. It's not occupied. So we could go over here. There's like three grunts. So we'll take those guys out real quickly and easily. And take this guy out as well. There is an invisible sword-wielding elite, so you will watch out for him. He's right here. He'll move up, and then he'll start chasing you. And you could backpedal and just shotgun him two or three times. It'll take him out. It seems counterintuitive, but it's easier when they're chasing you because they're running at you in a straight line, so it's a lot easier to land your shots. But once you take out that guy, hop in the ghost, which is up here to the left. I suppose you could also just run right past that invisible elite and just go to the ghost and then splatter him with the ghost. But anyway, we're moving on. You want to make sure that you're aware of this uh, shade turret up here. It's pretty devastating against ghosts. So you want to make sure you're in a position where you could sidestep whenever he shoots at you so you don't get hit. And also you could actually shoot him even if you can't even see him. You can see right there I kind of lined up the target and then backed up. And even though I couldn't see him anymore, my bullets still continued past the border of the screen. And that's something we're going to do with these fuel rod turrets as well. Unfortunately, I tried to back up there and strafe a little bit, but my marines got in the way. But you can see after I took a couple fuel rod blasts that I got out of the way of those marines, or those marines got out of my way. And I was able to back up and shoot the uh, fuel rod turret even though I couldn't even see it. So two down, three to go. We're going to use the same strategy of shooting it when we can't even see it. Just know the general area that it's in. Uh, we should probably take out this one on the left first because it's a little closer, so we'll do that. And uh, we won't risk putting ourselves in harm's way. And this one up here is weak already because I was shooting a little bit. But we'll back up to take out this ghost. 
No reason to get up super close to them. Just keep backing up and uh, take them out from afar, just like the fuel rod turrets. And we're going to take out the uh, enemies up here that are on foot. And I actually ended up blowing up the fuel rod turret without even kind of lining up the shot at all. I was just shooting at the ground troops, and I happened to blow up the fuel rod turret, so that's fine with me. So now that we took out all the fuel rod turrets, we could actually go and finish the mission by going to the final nav point. But I decided I wanted to take out the remaining ground troops for no reason at all. And I also wanted to show you what to do if your uh, ghost actually gets too weak to operate with any sense of uh, confidence. You just want to bail or ditch the uh, the ghost. There's actually a bunch of crates of plasma grenades lying around these fuel rod turrets. So if your ghost gets super weak, it's not the end of the world. You can just hop out, grab some of these grenades, throw them over the barricades near these fuel rod turrets, and blow them up that way. But once they're all blown up, we're going to run back here to this nav point, which is by the grizzly that we abandoned earlier. And the mission will end, and that is the end of that one. On to the next. D4, this mission we need to actually protect the elephant for the duration of the mission. The whole time we're just protecting this thing as it moves from point A to point B. And to start off this mission, there's a bunch of suicide grunts running at the back of the elephant as it drives away, and also some elites. You want to take out the grunts, hopefully, near some elites, just like I did there. Because when you kill those suicide grunts, they drop their grenades, and those grenades go off, and it could kill a bunch of other enemies, which is very useful. So ideally, you want to kill the grunts right next to elites, so the elites go down with them. But we also have the Stun Blast armor ability to start off this mission, so if things get a little too hectic, we could deploy that, and it freezes all the enemies nearby for a short time. So you could kind of use that to gather yourself to regroup a little bit. And remember, these blue elites are pretty weak, so if you shoot them once with any weapon, it only takes one melee to finish them off. And that goes for marines, too. If you see a marine shoot one of these blue elites, you could just run up to that blue elite and finish them off with a melee real quick. Unfortunately, it looks like all my marines are dead. Uh, that happens sometimes when there's a bunch of suicide grunts running around. But we'll continue on on our own. Oh, wait, here's one. Never mind, I lied. We have one survivor. So me and my marine buddy will press on. There's going to be a change of enemies. There's going to be suicide grunts still, but instead of elites, there's going to be drones, which I prefer because they're easier to deal with. The grunts will continue to take down with SMGs. It's pretty easy to take those guys out with that real quick. Another plus is there's a ton of SMG ammo on this map. There's a crate of it on the right side of the bridge and a crate of it on the left side of the bridge as well, along with some grenades. And as for the drones, we could take those guys out with SMGs as well, but we're just going to melee those guys for the most part. We definitely don't want to beat down the grunts, though, because they'll kill us with their grenades that they drop. But here we are at the second crate of SMG ammo and grenades here. You can see we exchanged our armor ability from the stun blast to the sprint, which we're going to use in a little bit. But we're just going to stand here at the crate of ammo, and you can see I am not losing any ammo. I'm just standing here and shooting away at these grunts and getting the ammo back as soon as I fire it. So you can just stand here and take out all the suicide grunts as they pass by. Once you can see that there's some elites spawning in, we want to sprint up and grab this ghost. It's not totally healthy. It's about like three-eighths full of health, but that's fine. We're just going to take out like five or six elites with this along with uh, a drone or two. And we'll just make short work of those guys. And uh, this guy's making it hard for me, though. Come on. Take the splatter. And then my marine dives in front of me so I can't even move uh, where I want to. Thanks, buddy. We were friends when we started crossing this bridge, but I'm not so sure anymore. But once we take out all the elites and the drones behind the elephant, we're actually going to bail out of the ghost and run in front of it to the right. And we're going to hop in this turret, and there's actually a bunch of enemies that spawn in in front of the elephant to finish off the mission. So we're going to lay into these guys with the shade turret. And uh, you could do this on foot as well. If you don't want to get in the shade turret, you could hop out and throw some grenades at the spawn points as they come through the shield door. Uh, whatever you decide. This elephant is pretty healthy at this point, so even if those suicide grunts uh, lay into this elephant, uh, it'll probably survive at this point. We took pretty good care of it, so that is the end of the mission, and we'll move on to the final one in this operation. And this mission happens to be one of the most difficult in the game. Uh, I failed at it a ton of times when I first started playing this game. Not only do you need to hold out and survive for two minutes twice in this mission, but you need to protect these marines that are running between the elephant and the spirit dropship. And they are not helping you at all. They're just running from point A to point B. It'd be one thing if they were actually firing their gun and throwing grenades, but they are not helpful at all. They, I see they have guns on their back, it looks like. I don't know why they're not using them. They're just running straight ahead with blinders on. So it was tough to not only keep yourself alive, but keep these guys alive. If 10 of them die, then the mission is over. But Uncle Silver's got some good news for you. If you stand here where I'm standing now, not only will you easily survive, you will also make it very difficult for the aliens to shoot at these Marines. For whatever reason, uh, if you stand here... They have a tough time shooting at these Marines that are moving across. When the Covenant are up at the top of the screen right now, they don't have a good angle to shoot at these guys. They kind of shoot at them and the shot goes behind them. So the Marines can mostly make it to the dropship. I guess by me standing here, they kind of move to a position where they don't have a good shot on the Marines and they also don't really shoot at me either. So you can see I'm shooting at some of these guys. 
but for the most part, it's not 100% necessary. The only time that the Covenant really become a threat for these Marines is if they move into the path of the Marines themselves. So if they stay at the top of the screen, most of their shots won't connect. But if they close that gap and move into the path of the Marines, then their shots will connect. So you want to make sure that you keep the path clear for the Marines to move forward and into the dropship. So I'm going to speed this part up. It's me doing the same old thing, uh, just standing here and killing some aliens as I see fit. Uh, really just prioritizing the ones that get close to the path of the Marines that are going from the Elephant to the dropship. But at about this point, when there's about 10 seconds left on the countdown timer, we're going to start going down here. And since we were standing still the whole time, we never really had an opportunity to replenish our ammo, so that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to grab the fire bombs out of that crate. We're going to grab the assault rifle here. And it doesn't matter what secondary weapon we have at this point, we're just going to use the assault rifle for the remainder of the mission here. So now we can see we have another countdown timer of a little over two minutes, just like we did up at the beginning of the mission. And we're basically going to do the same thing. We're going to stand in about the same spot in relation to the elephant, kind of in the back at the ramp where the Marines are coming from. And they're moving across to the Spirit, just like they were in the previous section. And we're basically going to do the same thing. There are going to be enemies coming from both sides, though, the right and the left. So for the enemies that come from the right side, I like to throw a firebomb every now and then to kind of block off that section. So any Covenant troops that come from over there have two choices. They could not move forward and thereby aren't a threat to me or my Marine buddies. Or they can move forward and walk into the flames and die. So I'll try to keep that firewall up as long as possible. You could carry up to five firebombs, so that's what I came into this battle with. And we're really just standing here and doing the same thing we did up top. They don't have a great angle on these Marines that are crossing uh, because they shoot at them. And by the time their bullets reach them, they've already moved forward a little bit. So those shots are going behind them. So pretty much the same thing we were doing in the previous section. A couple new things, though, are the fact that there will be some red elites that spawn in. And red elites have focus rifles, which are more accurate. So they're less likely to miss, so you want to prioritize taking out those guys with your assault rifle. Fortunately, the assault rifle is pretty accurate, and it reaches much further than the SMG and the Magnum that we were using in the previous section. And those red elites tend to be more aggressive than other enemies, so they tend to move into the path of the Marines, which, like I said earlier, is something we don't want. Because, like I mentioned, if they're closer to the path of the Marines, they're more likely to land their shot, especially since the focus rifle is much more accurate. And also, elites like to melee people a lot, so you don't want an elite standing close to the path of the Marines and just smacking them as they try to get on the dropship. But there aren't too many of those red elites, and it's easy to take them out with your assault rifle. The other big new enemy that appears in the second segment of this mission is the Brute Chieftain, and you want to start looking out for him at around this point. Around 25, 20 seconds left, he will start charging the area. There he is, uh, right on cue, and you want to just shoot him while you're backing up, and you could also stun blast him, uh, so you could take him out pretty easily that way. Uh, watch out, because if you kill one... Uh, another one will spawn in and he'll start charging the area as well. So we'll keep an eye out for him. It looks like we're in pretty good shape though. At this point, it's impossible for eight more Marines to die. So we're really just focusing on us staying alive at this point. But if you start getting charged by an elite or a brute, just back up, run away, use the sun blast, just ensure you stay alive for the last few seconds. And the mission will conclude. And that is it for Operation D. See you guys for Operation E. Thanks for watching, guys. If you found that video helpful, be sure to click on the scorpion icon to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. You can also check out some related guides by clicking on the videos on screen, and you can find links in the description for other social media links of mine. Stay tuned for more Halo guides, and I'll see you in the next one.